use them for security purposes. So we want authentication services, authorization services, and auditing services, uh, and, and we want to be able to deliver those in a virtualized way uh, so that we can authenticate you in Beijing, Bangalore, and Boston, and then authorize you in Manhattan, right? That's something that we just need to do. We need to start doing. We want interoperability, so we want open standards like SAML and ZACAML, WS Security, or other open standards, pick your favorite, so that we can authenticate you and, authori and then authorize you on your WebLogic system, on your WebSphere system, on your SAP system, on your Vista system. So we need to be able to have consistent policy enforcement across these platforms. Finally, we want reusability. So there's really three ways you could do security. You can build out a centralized system, which uh, means that you have your ser service requester and service provider in the same exact domain, sort of like the mainframe model. That works great, except people stopped building systems like that about 20 or 30 years ago. You can have a distributed system where you have high assurance service requesters talking to high assurance service providers. And the fields will be green and everyone will win a prize, but it actually is only a beautiful dream. <coughs> then there is sort of the, and I'm of partially of Scandinavian descent, so I like the pragmatic decentralized approach, um, which says, okay, we, can, we can't assume we can get all of our endpoints to be high assurance. We can probably get a medium level of assurance if we work really hard. What we can do then is mediate the communications between medium assurance endpoints with, a high, with one or more high assurance intermediaries. Sounds, sounds ridiculous if you think of things in terms of web application design. And so that brings me to my next heretical point. When you think about web services, web services are not, the programming model is based on message document integration. So the programming t model to keep in mind in your head and the security model is not the web application security model. It's email. So think about the life cycle of an email. An email message you send to somebody, before they receive it, it goes through spam, filters, antivirus, post fix, send mail, what have you. Doesn't matter if you're using SSL, when you receive the email, it matters about all of the security checks that, that happened in between the life cycle of that email. So that's the model to keep in, in, in your head, that we need various high assurance uh, intermediaries that perform a set of security functions on our web services. And basically we want to do this so that security can be a business enabler. Because we have brakes in a car, we can actually drive fast. I can prove this theory by looking at the 1930s Roadster, which looked great, drove 110 miles an hour, had fantastic handling. Problem is, if something happened, you got into a, a, a wet spot on the road or a bad driver, you'd get in a crash and you'd die, which is bad. Now, if we look at the Toyota Camry, I believe the best-selling car today, looks good, good handling, lots and lots of safety features. They compete on safety features. They know exactly what Honda's doing, they know exactly what Volkswagen's doing in safety, and they actually compete on safety. So the 1930s Roadster handled the functional requirements, driving fast, good handling, looks good, all the functional requirements that you'd get in a use case in business analysis, but what they did not handle was the non-functional requirements. That's the difference between, one of the differences between the automobile industry of the 1930s and where we are today. So lots and lots of safety features in a, in a brand new Toyota Camry. Anti-lock brakes, seat belts, uh, airbags, side curtain airbags, and so on. And oh, by the way, third party independent verification. So that's sort of why we're here. Let's look at the OWASP top 10 for web services. We want to apply, we want to apply the work that uh, Andrew Vandersock and, and the rest of the folks did on the various incarnations of OWASP top 10, which has obviously been one of the leading uh, awareness tools uh, in, the, in the industry. Um, and we want to show what things remain from web application security vulnerabilities and what are the new uh, nuances or new, in, new issues that we have in web services. So we have a list of 10 web services vulnerabilities, and then of course guidance on how to protect your web services environments from those. Um, so the draft is now being reviewed. If you're interested in being a reviewer of the draft, just drop me a line and let me know. Email is on the blog or I'm, I'm pretty easy to find in the Google. 
Um, so far, we've gotten some good feedback, especially wanted to note Mark O'Neill and James McGovern. I don't know if James is here, but uh, I think he's here today. So uh, he's doing a lot of things on, on web services uh, and has been helpful. Uh, and our goal is to publish this to the wiki uh, by OWASP Portugal. So we talked about web services. Uh, a user clicks a button there in the upper left-hand corner, generates an HTTP request, and then web services literally could be anywhere else in the architecture. So there's many, many cases where you might use web services talking to an ESB, talking to a back-end system, uh, putting a SOAP interface or a REST interface in front of something like a mainframe or Siebel or PeopleSoft to make it easier to talk to. And the question is, how are we going to uh, find and fix all the security vulnerabilities that can fall out of this? So let's look at some vulnerabilities. So the first one, um, oh, I should note, of the, of the 10, we basically have eight vulnerabilities from OWASP Top 10 that are more or less the same. They just have web services uh, nuances. Uh, and then we have two new ones. So I'll get to the two new ones last. Uh, of course, injection flaws. This is an OWASP conference, so I'm not going to spend a ton of time on, on how SQL injection works. But I wanted to note one thing, uh, and that is in web services, we have many, many new targets for injection attacks. Web services are typically, especially SOAP web services and WS star web services, such as you might see in uh, Vista WCF, uh, are composed of lots of, uh, uh, lots of parsers, lots of moving parts, registries, configuration files, schemas, and so on. So, th so there are many new targets for injection attacks. Um, and the basic uh, principle remains the same from SQL injection in, in web applications. Uh, service uh, requester and service provider are decoupled. So just like your web server doesn't control the input that the browser sends, the service provider has no control over what the service requester is going to send in. So the service requester could send valid data, or they could send the famous uh, uh, one or one equals one. Uh, depending on how the query is implemented, the query on the back end uh, uh, appends the data and then returns all of the rows in the database. Uh, issue number two, malicious file execution. This actually was one in the OWASP uh, top 10 that actually has web services examples already into it. So this one was, was uh, more or less uh, talking about the same thing. Again, the issue that we have here in web services is that from a malicious file execution standpoint, we have many new targets for people to target, uh, but the fundamental principle uh, remains the same. Um, so the, uh, the ability to uh, send XML documents uh, to the service, um, this, is an, this is an example from the SIFT uh, web services paper teaching old dog new tricks, and effectively the service requester sends malicious code uh, in the form of uh, XML and the first thing the service provider is going to do is uh, parse or scan that information, and we can then send back the uh, scanned information neatly packaged in XML back to the service provider. So this actually uncovers one of the main issues with web services security. We assume that uh, mostly everything coming in and out is XML based, which means the very first thing we need to do from an implementation standpoint is parse that XML. So your parser, which was designed to be pretty low level down in the stack, uh, is you know, close to the data. The parser is now actually on the front lines. So we've sort of flipped the architecture where we would usually have web server, business logic, data app.